Today we're driving the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. This is a lifted, more off-road focused Outback. We have nine and a half inches of ground clearance. It's powered by Subaru's 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer four-cylinder. That's mated to a high torque, continuously variable transmission with a revised X-Mode all-wheel drive system. Let's walk you around this new Subaru Outback Wilderness. We'll take it for a drive and then hopefully give you guys an idea of what this thing is like to live with on the road. So first of all, we've got some interior accents that are slightly different from the other Subaru Outbacks. There's the Onyx edition and just the standard Outback. We have these little tags here that say Subaru Wilderness that are stitched into the door panel. Some contrast gold stitching surrounds around the shifter and below on the steering wheel spoke. And then on the outside, it's painted in this very cool blue. We have a beefier roof rack that's rated to handle a rooftop tent. A couple of fog lights up front, two recovery points, but I don't like that they're hidden behind these two panels here. You gotta pop them out with a screwdriver. It would be nice to have those exposed. If you were truly going off-road, you'd want as quick access to those as possible. We have different wheels for this wilderness. 17-inch wheels on Geolander all-terrain tires. It's kind of a hybrid highway slash all-terrain tire, a little bit more off-road focused and uh, taller springs to give this Outback a little bit more ground clearance. Not too crazy about the design on these wheels, but um, your valve stem is still pretty exposed to rocks and uh, impacts if you're doing any rock crawling with this. Let's show you in the trunk here. Lots of space in the back here. You do get a full-size spare tire, which is hidden under there. It just barely fits. I do appreciate that. That will come in handy if you do any type of off-roading. You can fold down these rear seats with ease. Just a pull of that lever. Two buttons up there to close the rear hatch or lock the vehicle if everything is turned off. Rear seats have this kind of rugged, slippery material on them easy to load stuff on, and uh, everything is very washable and dirt friendly in the back of this Outback. Auto up and down windows on all four corners. We get a couple USB ports back here, 2.1 amp USB type A ports, heated seats for both sides. Yeah, pretty nice looking interior. This Outback is around $37,000 MSRP. Specced out, it's just under 40 grand. This has the optional 11.6 inch touchscreen, which honestly for $1,800, I wouldn't spec it. It's a little bit slow, a little bit laggy. We'll talk about that later. Otherwise though, a very nice space in the back of the Super Outback. A couple nice cup holders. I like the material choice, the way everything is designed. It looks and feels luxurious and rugged. We don't really get any additional skid plates on this Outback Wilderness, though we do get a higher clearance front and rear bumper for better approach and departure angles. You can see how it's just shortened just a little bit at the front. We get a little bit of a thin aluminum skid plate right there, but just over that front radiator area. This has a much higher ground clearance than a lot of SUVs on the market, and I think it's probably the highest wagon that's being sold. The Forerunner has similar levels of ground clearance if you want to have a, have a little bit of a comparison. It was the holidays this week and I didn't have a chance to take this off-road, but there are plenty of videos out there. So let's show you around this interior. Pretty nice looking space. I do like the simplicity of everything here. Traditional shifter, parking brake is right next to it. You've got a camera view that you can just select very quickly. See in front of you or behind you, depending on if you're in drive or reverse. It's not the biggest camera display because of this vertically oriented screen. Speaking of which, let's talk about the screen for a minute. When you first start it up, it's very slow, very sluggish to respond. It actually uh, completely turned off on me and faulted on me this week, and I had to restart the car to get things to work. 
Ever since then, it's been pretty good, but it's not my favorite display. All of your climate controls are down here. You do have quick physical buttons to increase or decrease your temperature, but if you wanna change fan speed, you have to go here and select it on this little tiny button, and it's just not the most responsive. Heated seats, to turn those on, you have to go in here and one press, two, three, four, depending on what settings you want. And you can either wait for this window to close or you can close it manually. It will close after a few seconds, which is nice. But if you wanna enable recirculating air, again, that's two presses, about three to four seconds of your eyes off the road. And I don't know, I feel like putting simple controls like this into a touchscreen just creates a little bit more of a dangerous distraction while you're driving. And if it's not instant and not super accurate, it's a little bit lost on me as a useful feature in a car. You do get some neat little menus at the top here though. You can see your weather, which X mode all wheel drive you're in, various temperatures, oil temp, water temp, average speed. I like the vertical display with Apple CarPlay. That's pretty neat. Something a little bit different that I haven't quite seen before. For the most part, when everything warms up on the screen after the first five, 10 minutes or so, it's responsive enough I would just like to see a little bit better from Subaru. If this is a the top of their line infotainment and kind of the future of the direction that they're gonna be going with their vertically oriented Tesla-like screens, they've gotta be good, they've gotta be quick. This feels like I'm touching something, interacting with something that's from 10 years ago uh, from a tech standpoint and a responsiveness standpoint. We've got a bunch of different steering wheel controls on your right is all of your adaptive cruise control, Subaru EyeSight, your camera-based, uh, lane keeping assist and, and adaptive cruise. That's very easy to control. Over here you've got track selection, volume controls, your telephone controls, and then down here a little tiny toggle switch to cycle through a few options here. You can see your navigation, your radio, temperatures, average fuel economy, all that good stuff. This is rated for about 24 miles to the gallon combined. We do get some physical buttons over here on the left to change our gauge brightness and I do like how it changes the brightness of the big screen and the gauges in the center. That's very nice. And then there's a button in the back there to pop the trunk or tailgate. Like I said earlier, auto up down windows on all four corners. Let's pop the hood and see what it looks like underneath. Subaru usually does a pretty good job with their engine bays, still making them look like engines. We also get this low reflective surface on the hood here. Nice for off-roading up a hill if the sun's in your eye. This blue oil filter. Little oil cooler in there too underneath. Pretty neat. Top mount intercooler. Cool looking engine bay with this induction scoop right here too. Yeah, proper engine. Gotta give Subaru credit for that. I think it's a pretty good looking wagon. Maybe a little overkill for a lot of people, but uh, no, it is nice to see Subaru incorporating some more lifted off-road focus vehicles in their lineup. Hopefully they'll do a BRZ wilderness someday. I would 100% buy that. All right, let's take this thing for a drive and see how it does on the road. For something with higher ground clearance, a little bit more off-road focus, I'm actually surprised this has excellent road manners. And even on these Geolander tires, though it doesn't have the same level of grip as uh, the normal Subaru Outback, it corners pretty well. So setting off, this CVT is pretty smooth. It's not as linear of an accelerator pedal as I would like, but it's a lot better than some other vehicles in their lineup, uh, namely the Subaru Ascent, for example. It's pretty easy to drive smoothly, and there is a lot of power here. 260 horsepower, and uh, this 2.4 liter boxer turbo really is quite responsive, and uh, it packs a punch. This Lineartronic CVT will mimic an eight-speed automatic transmission. You can use the paddle shifters, and those seem to respond pretty well, giving you a good amount of deceleration on downshifts. On power, it's not the smoothest power delivery. It can be a little bit rough and jerky. Makes a good noise though. Hear a little bit of a boxer rumble in the background. Just slightly different from the standard inline four-cylinder sound that you get in most cars. Ride quality is pretty nice too. Everything is well damped. You had some bigger bumps and, and whoops and undulations and this still stays pretty composed. Let's do a little zero to 60 here. 
onto this entrance ramp. A little bit more nose dive <laughs> than you would get in the standard Outback, but cornering speeds and mechanical grip is actually quite impressive. It's not a sluggish car. I imagine this wouldn't be that much slower in a straight line than a WRX, for example, with a CVT. You're not going to get as much cornering speed and grip, but for an off-road focus lifted wagon SUV type vehicle, uh, this is very, very good on the street. Its road manners are fantastic. Let's engage eyesight, turn on some of these systems. You have an easy way with these buttons to change your following distance with the car in front of you, and this will actually follow surprisingly close. You can also turn on lane keeping assist or steering assist. It does a decent job of keeping you centered between the lines. Sometimes it will bounce a little bit back and forth, but it's not terrible. At speed, it's pretty quiet, considering the big roof rails and the lifted ride height. Close the sunroof for a little bit better NVH, but these tires don't seem to make too much noise. Get a little bit of sound from the engine and drivetrain, but for the most part, not too bad. A lot quieter than my 2006 Toyota 4Runner. Some rough railroad tracks here. Very well composed over bumpy stuff. We'll try to find some dirt roads up here and uh, see how it handles those. This is some of the roughest pavement I've found in the area. Probably be a pretty good vehicle for Michigan between the all-wheel drive performance. We do quite well in the snow and that extra ride comfort and ground clearance. Probably have a pretty decent daily driver for all four seasons. just a little bit of roughness occasionally between simulated shifts with a CVT. I'll show you guys what the manual mode looks like. It's still a bit of a slushy CVT. There's not as much refinement here as I would like. And honestly, if you're using this for a lot of off-roading, I'm not sure what long-term reliability would be like either. This is almost a 4,000-pound wagon, 260 horsepower. You're going to want to change your CVT fluid uh, at regular intervals, that's for sure. One strange thing that I've noticed this week is the climate control. Uh, the automatic climate control doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if that's a specific thing with this car or if that's kind of a problem with other Subaru Outbacks but if you put it on auto, it just goes all the way to, if you set it to 70 auto, it'll heat this cabin up to 85, 90 degrees. It gets blazingly hot in here. Um, so I don't know, that's been a little bit strange. I've been having to manually control my climate this week in this super outback wilderness. One feature that I do feel like this Outback Wilderness is missing, especially for the price point of almost $40,000, is a heated steering wheel. Um, that might be an optional extra that you can check, but our tester doesn't have it, and I feel like that's something like that should just be standard. You know, I think this would be a really nice vehicle for anyone who's a little bit more adventure-minded, and they need that extra ground clearance, but they don't quite want to have the fuel economy penalty that comes with having a Toyota 4Runner or a Jeep or you know an SUV that's going to be much heavier. Uh, this is going to tiptoe through trails a little bit easier because of its lighter weight or relative light weight. 
curb weight compared to a lot of SUVs. The CVT is a bit of a letdown. It would be nice for this to have a traditional automatic, a torque converter automatic, but here we are. Subaru is pretty much committed to CVTs unless if it's a manual transmission. Otherwise, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, this is an interesting offering in the market. I like that Subaru is doing these wilderness editions. I hope they kind of keep it up through some other vehicle offerings like maybe the WRX or STI or BRZ. They throw it in a performance car. That would be pretty neat to have. And uh, I would definitely plunk down thirty to $35,000 for a lifted BRZ rally car. And that kind of goes into saying that this is a little bit less of a rock crawler and a little bit more of a rally car, I think. And I think that's kind of cool. There's a, there is a cool factor to the Subaru Outback Wilderness. It's pretty fast. It handles great. It's reasonably efficient. And uh, I think it would be very effective at its intended purpose. So we're at a traffic light now. Engine turned off. We'll show you what stop-start sounds like. Pretty good for a boxer engine. Sometimes they can just clatter to a start, and this does a pretty nice job making it smooth and seamless. I think there's a lot to like here with this Outback Wilderness. You know, this big touchscreen was a little bit of a disappointment for me this week, but it's not an absolute deal breaker. It's just a mild annoyance, and it is an optional extra. You can swing for the smaller screen and the physical buttons, and personally, I just, I would. Um, I don't think it's worth paying $1,800 to be mildly frustrated with your infotainment for the rest of your ownership experience. But I think if manufacturers are going to be putting these Tesla iPad-like screens in their cars, they need to do a better job with the, the software and with the hardware behind them. They need to be faster. They need to be more responsive. Subaru has done a pretty good job organizing this and laying everything out. It seems to be a pretty intuitive and easy display to use. It's just that extra millisecond of delay with all of your inputs is really kind of a bummer, and it makes for, I don't know, I think an almost dangerous experience for driving on the road. You want your inputs to be immediate, and there's nothing quite like touching a physical button, a physical control in a car, and uh, I, I really hope that these big touchscreens are not long for this world because I, I don't think they make it any safer of a driving experience. All right, we're going to hit a little bit of a bumpy off-road section here. Let's see how this Outback Wilderness handles it. Should do pretty well. There are some pretty gnarly bumps throughout here. Test the suspension. Put us into another X-Mode all-wheel drive, perhaps. Maybe snow and dirt. Or deep snow and mud. Loosen up the traction control system a bit. It is nice knowing that you have enough ground clearance to tackle pretty much anything you want to. That nine, nine and a half inches is kind of a sweet spot for a lot of off-road focused vehicles. Another thing I've noticed about this Outback is that the interior lighting is not very bright or plentiful. You've got a little bit of a light in the back there, but there's no one button to kind of turn all the interior lights on that I've found. And uh, that's a little bit of an annoyance. It's very dark and hard to find things in this interior in the dark. Also, there isn't a physical traction control button that I can find anywhere in this car. You just have your off-road modes, your dirt, snow, normal, deep snow, mud, X mode, all-wheel drive. And traction control hasn't been very invasive or kicked in much at all this week, which is nice, but you know, this is just something that is worth noting that uh, they've gotten rid of the track control button in this Super. There's a little blank switch over here where it would normally be, and uh, it's just completely absent. Let's 
see if we can upset this all-wheel drive system on this incline here. Oh, it got up okay. A little bit of wheel spin, but it figured out what we were doing. Hit the brakes, and uh, no drama. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for our Subaru Outback Wilderness video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this gives you an idea of what this thing is like to drive. I wish we could have done a little bit more of a, a rugged off-road test with this, but for the most part, I think something like this is going to be a really nice vehicle to own and live with. Um, you know, I wish Subaru wouldn't give us this big screen and they wouldn't give us a CVT, but those are minor gripes that honestly don't take away from the whole driving experience. I think for the most part, something like this is really gonna be an enjoyable and fun vehicle to drive for any owner who decides to get one. So anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.